Welcome you to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Gina Maria Koberl. This is my first Sunday here. We'll have a short installation uh, part in the service um, a little bit after the sermon today. And I just want to welcome you to worship. And uh, a lot of it you will just follow along on the slides up front. And I invite you to pray with, oh, first we start with announcements. <laughs> so one announcement is we have a picnic lunch immediately following worship today. Uh, so you're invited to join us for that. Others, there is vacation Bible school starting, and we have a sign-up table out in the entry. Also, do you want to announce? Um, you guys uh, hopefully didn't miss this. We did have cake out there celebrating our graduates of their second quarter from the high school world up in the gymnasium at Bone Bay. And any other graduates that are back this year, they're proud. And that is all the announcements I can think of off the top of my head. The rest are in your bulletin insert. Um, you can follow along. Now I invite you to join me in an opening prayer. Let us prepare our minds and spirit. Gracious God, we thank you for your presence among us, for this guide and advocate, this one who is with us to help the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the 
gracious love and forgiveness that you shower upon us through your Son. Let us be mindful of this Spirit as we walk with each other and name our celebrations and our loss, knowing you are our comforter and guide. Amen. And let us sing. Together in trust and hope, we proclaim our faith. We believe he is one God, creator of all things, and all things he has done,
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Glorious God. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his power, I proclaim to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. Know that this Spirit of God walks with you and holds you in the comfort and forgiveness of Jesus' love. Amen. Let us sing. The Gospel today is taken from St. John, the 14th chapter. If you love me, Jesus said to his disciples, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments... And keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal to them myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Maybe, oh, sharing of the peace. <laughs> 
The peace of Christ be with you all. Please share it with one another. I will not leave you orphaned, thus says the Lord. This gospel, this message today, it speaks to a very common human experience. And that is the fear that we feel when we lose a loved one who has played an important role in our lives. This reading is part of Jesus' farewell discourse, a very long goodbye that Jesus gives over five chapters in the book of John. These formal farewell speeches were quite common in biblical time. They provided words of comfort, instruction for survivors, and practical sensitivity. Those of us who have experienced loss, this loss of a significant mentor or leader, the loss of a parent or a friend, we know. We know how shaken and how concerned we become about the future. We may say, What do we do now? How shall we proceed without this strong personality who held the family together? As a congregation, you've experienced the retirement of a pastor of 20 years. Anytime a pastor leaves For any occasion, there is a whole gamut of emotions that are felt. Emotions of sadness, of anger, of disorganization, of depression, and grief. And so, you may find it easy to relate with the disciples today because you know what they're going through. For the disciples, as Jesus went on and on and on about leaving them, their anxiety and stress and confusion multiplied. Hadn't they left their old lives to follow him? Wasn't he the Messiah? Hadn't they come to believe that? Wasn't he their friend and their leader and their guide and their advocate? They'd only been at this for three years. They had a whole lifetime ahead of them to do this work together. And now here he was telling them that they would carry on without him. So it's little wonder to think that they were having feelings of abandonment and, yes, feeling like orphans. Separation anxiety is a very powerful emotion. It is deeply felt and personal. It is an emotion of loss. And it's a funny thing about loss. We don't really like to talk about it that much. We're not comfortable with it. Yet it's such a prevalent and common part of life, whether it is a process of loss, such as that experienced with diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's, or the loss 
of a job or moving or the loss of relationships, especially felt in divorce or the loss of our health and our abilities. So prevalent, so common, so difficult, and so few places where it is safe to name it and to talk about it. You'd think that the church would be a safe place, that we would be fluent in the language of loss, but we're not much better at it either. We don't like to talk about it that much either. But we can become places that are not ashamed to name loss, to walk with each other, to encourage and be a listening presence for each other, to combat the feelings of isolation, and make a choice to claim life fully in the presence and the name of loss. In his farewell, Jesus is not only saying goodbye, but he's making an introduction. I will not leave you orphaned, he says. One is being called to come in, to walk with you, to guide you, to advocate for you. The world's not going to fall apart after all. It's going to be okay. What we began will continue. There is a power that will work with you and through you. The Spirit we call holy is the presence of God. The Holy Spirit is a third person of the Trinity, true God with the Father and the Son. What that means is that the Spirit is not the power or essence or energy of God. The Spirit is God present. God with us every day, all the time, now, present here. The Spirit is present in our world doing the work of Scripture. John 14 tells the story of Jesus preparing his disciples for a great task. He tells them, I'm setting you out for a, a hard task, and I'm sending you out on a very difficult engagement. But I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send you someone called the Paracletos, who will guide you on what to do and enable you to do it. That's what the original Greek says, calls it Paracletos. And that is translated as counselor or helper or advocate in our English Bibles. What it literally means is someone who is called in. They're called in to be at your side. A guide, a helper, an advocate, an advisor, a counselor. When I say that the Holy Spirit is a live and living God present with us doing the work of the scripture. What that spirit is doing is some of the things on this list. The Holy Spirit helps people see that they have done wrong and directs them to God. The Holy Spirit helps us to do right, nudging us along whether we're listening or not. The Holy Spirit will nudge in there, even if you're not paying attention. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand the Bible, opens it up for us, gives us meaning and significance to us, helps us to apply the Bible and its readings and, and sayings to our everyday practical lives. The Holy Spirit prays for us when we don't have the words or know how to pray or what to pray. The Holy Spirit will pray for us all the time. The Holy Spirit is our counselor. 
when we are in need of direction. The Holy Spirit is our comforter when we are going through tough times. The Holy Spirit helps us know the gifts that God has given us, gifts like the gift of teaching or the gift of helping or showing mercy and kindness to others or gifts of encouraging others or the gift of leading and wisdom. All that the Holy Spirit opens our eyes to. The Holy Spirit helps us to live out the fruits of the Spirit. And here, here's what the fruits are. The fruits of the Spirit, this is ways you know the Spirit's around. Joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Finally, the Holy Spirit helps us to see that we need God. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us. That means makes us holy. Basically, the Holy Spirit is what gives us faith to be believers. It's what holds us strong to the faith when all our logic and practicality doesn't seem to make sense. It's the Spirit that works faith in us when we feel we cannot have faith. In that list, you may notice the word phrase, Holy Spirit helps. It's mentioned nearly every time. It's why the Spirit has names like counselor and advocate and guide and intercessor and revealer and spirit of truth and witness and teacher. All of those names are there. The Spirit is there because the journey and the process and practice of being a Christian is full of challenges. And you will have tough times and you will have loss. We are given the Spirit in the shadow of loss. But that presence is here to help us build new life, to live fully loved, to never be orphaned in the reality of change and loss and even growth. We can identify with the disciples today because we know and have experienced loss just like they are in this scripture. Loss is part of life. So I invite you to name your loss. Name your loss. Let us be a people of comfort who walk alongside each other in our named losses. And we walk alongside each other infused in the Spirit, practicing and growing an ability to come along in faith and love, naming our losses and loving each other through them. I will not leave you orphaned, thus says the Lord. Amen. In holy baptism, we are called by the promise of God into a relationship of faith toward God and love toward one another. This relationship finds expression in our gathering as congregations of the church to hear God's word, eat and drink at the Lord's table, and minister to the needs of our community and God's world. As Lutheran congregations, we we call pastors to lead and assist us in our ministry, to teach, challenge, and admonish us according to the gospel, to counsel, comfort, and guide us in love of God and to oversee the events and activities of our common life. The interim period between a former pastor's leaving and a new pastor's coming affords us an opportunity to reflect on our past, evaluate our present, and dream toward our future as God's people. In partnership with Central States Synod and Congregational Council, Pastor Gina Maria Cobral has agreed to be the interim pastor at Messiah Lutheran Church. I commit myself to this new t- trust and responsibility. I promise to fulfill my responsibilities to the best of my ability in accordance with scripture. 
the Lutheran Confessions and Constitution of this congregation. Will you, as a congregation, receive me as your pastor and partner in ministry as we seek God's call for us in this interim period? We will. As a member and leader of this congregation, I ask you to join me in support of Pastor Gina Maria, to pray for her, to help and honor her, for her work's sake and all the things, to strive to live together in peace and unity of Christ. Will you join me in this support? Amen. Welcome, Pastor Gina Maria. We now officially begin our partnership in this interim ministry in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you call your people in baptism into the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we be renewed daily by the gift of your Holy Spirit, and may we be especially aware of your leading during this interim period. Grant us faithfulness and peace in all that we do, so that you may be glorified among us. We pray through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Rejoicing in the risen life of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Draw your whole church together as one. Bring an end to division. Send your spirit into your people and rouse us to greater love and mission. Lord, in your mercy, for the earth, for scientists, photographers, and explorers, for scholars, poets, musicians, artists, and all who lead us to greater knowledge and appreciation of beauty, for lakes and rivers, watersheds and wetlands, ponds and oceans, Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, give wisdom to those who govern, strengthen all who work for peace, protect those who have been displaced, or who have left their homes in search of safety and freedom. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need, for those who suffer abuse or neglect, for those who suffer post-traumatic stress, for those who struggle with addiction, for those who grieve and all who are ill, especially Darlene Aaron, Henry Bremenkamp, Pat Brown, Jeannie Burnell Graves, Ron Callan, Jeff Dickman, Claudia Farrell, Randy Greenwood, Gina, Ed Heinz, Haley Hubbard, Debbie Huff, Vera Kimsey, Kathy Kutzer, Marilyn, friend of Christine Carlson, Shirley Masters, Audrey Pierce, John Versick, Shelley, Jan Schnath, Nellie Seward, John Spaghera, Pat Spaghera, Louise Sterling, Steve Swam, Jennifer Umlin, and Kim Wall. Lord, in your mercy. For those in need and for this assembly, bless those preparing for baptism and affirmation of baptism. Strengthen our ministries of evangelism, outreach, and pastoral care. Deepen our faith and knowledge of you. Lift up in prayer Messiah Stephen's ministry program. We ask for God's guidance and blessing as we move forward in recruitment and training of Stephen's ministers in this congregation. We pray that we may walk and be a place where we name our loss, where we walk alongside each other in faith and love. Lord, in your mercy. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died, inspired us by your witness to your love. Bring us into your eternal presence to live with you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Joining our voices with your faithful ones in every place and time, we offer our prayers in the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who lived among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it and he gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This is my cup shed for you a new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, this life-giving death, this glorious resurrection, we await a promised life for all in this dying world. 
Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor be his. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in this holy church, now, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you all to come forward. All are welcome to this communion table and receive this meal of forgiveness.
I invite you to, you may stand, I invite you to do something a little different, and that is take the hand of the person next to you and receive the blessing as a family of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the gifts of his body and his blood, strengthen and keep you, unite you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O morning star, fair and bright, you have refreshed us again with heavenly food. You are our dearest treasure. Go with us now, today, tomorrow, every day, that we tell the story of your never-ending love and sing your praise both now and forever. Amen. Godspeeding that we don't want to have to do as Margie and Cammie will be heading to Columbia officially. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. When you came to this congregation, we rejoiced and received you into our fellowship in the gospel. In this community of faith, which you have heard the pro proclamation of God's word, which revealed his loving purpose for you and for all creation. You have been nourished at Christ's holy table and called to be witnesses of the gospel. God has blessed you in this fellowship, and he has blessed us through you. We encourage you to continue to receive and share God's gift in your new congregation as workers with us in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for Margie and Cammie and for our life together in this congregation and community. As they have been a blessing to us, so now we can send them forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
ongoing ministries and offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Yeah, it's getting hot, hot, easy, okay, wanna get ya, 